Hello and welcome to episode number 31 of the Knitting Teaspoon podcast. I am Lisbeth, your host, and this is a podcast which is all about knitting, sewing, other crafts that I've been up to, although this week there's only been knitting. <laughs> Spoiler. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, let's get right into the episode. Uh, today I am wearing uh, a hand knit sweater that is made by me. Uh, I don't know exactly what this yarn is because it's not. It wasn't labeled when I bought it, but I bought it at Antwerp Zwift, a shop in uh, Stockholm, Sweden, uh, and I think it was hand dyed and hand spun by uh, by the owner of the shop. So well, and uh, I'm, I'm not sure sure about the hand spun part of it because they had quite a bit of machinery in in their shop. Uh, they had a, a large weaving loom. Do you call that a loom? I don't know. <laughs> um, and I think they may have had some more than just a spinning wheel to uh, spin this fiber, or maybe they ordered it from somewhere. I don't know. Anyway, it was unlabeled, so I don't know what yarn it is. And uh, I made the pattern myself. Uh, it's uh, Entrelock. Um, because I'd seen uh, people knit entrelock uh, on other po podcasts and I really wanted to make something out of entrelock and uh, yeah I decided to well why not try a sweater so I did uh, but that's a long time ago I think I knit this sweater around two years ago I think it's the second sweater I cast on for myself so that's it's been a while but that's what I'm wearing so my entrelock sweater um, yeah, so let's get into what I've been doing this week because this is just an an old project of mine. Um, well, last week I told you guys I was knitting on a sock for my boyfriend and I was about here, I think. I put in the marker later on, but as you can see this sock is now finished, so I have a finished sock for my boyfriend but that's not all I have two finished socks and they ended up matching each other quite nicely so I'm uh, I'm pleased with that uh, I, I know my boyfriend doesn't care too much about having exactly matching socks but he wants other people to be able to tell that they are one pair so yeah I I think if you can't tell that this is a pair and well, <laughs> some of you probably should look at your eyes. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm quite happy with them. Uh, I finished these on, I think on Tuesday or maybe Wednesday. And uh, now it's Saturday. <laughs> so um, I had finished them. I showed them to my boyfriend and I said, you can't wear them because I need to show them on the podcast. But he, and he was like, no, but I need warm socks because the weather is turning you guys uh, until Thursday I think it was quite warm here uh, really summerish temperatures but now that it's officially autumn well the weather officially <laughs> turned to autumn as well uh, yesterday was quite stormy and a lot of rain and uh, cooler temperatures and oh my god I really enjoy <laughs> this time of year when the weather is shifting to cooler uh, temperatures and it's sweater weather again oh i'm so happy about sweater weather it uh it it really gets me excited uh all the knitwear uh that you can take out of your closet and start wearing again yeah that's that's an amazing time of year and uh yeah my boyfriend also wants to wear socks again so yeah here are a pair of hand knit socks for my boyfriend if you guys are wondering what pattern i'm using i well i don't think i i'm really using a pattern because I designed this myself the, these socks um, yeah so uh, you can find them as Lizzo's vanilla sock on uh, Ravelry um, just a pattern that I wrote up myself it has uh, well a, a little bit of a squared toe I think because that's just the way I like my my toes and uh, there's a tiny little bit of a heel flap and gussets going on and also a short row heel it's a rip and turn short row heel so nothing too crazy 
uh, I think it's a really basic pattern for sock knitting. Um, but I wrote it up uh, so that other people might have a look at it as well. Uh, if if you're not sure how to knit socks, but if you if you already knit socks, then there's probably nothing new in uh, in the pattern. But that's just the way I knit socks. So yeah, one pair of socks completely finished. I knit a lot on this last weekend uh, because my uh, parents they were married for 30 years. They celebrated their uh, wedding anniversary last weekend, and uh, yeah. We had a weekend away with family and I brought these socks with me and one of them was finished on the weekend and the other one was halfway done after after the weekend and we got in the car after Sunday evening we went out for dinner with the family and um, I wanted to knit on this sock on the way home but I dropped the stitches like right in the middle of the short row heel and I dropped all the stitches of the short row as well and it was dark um, some had already said so I, I and well you can see this is pretty dark yarn as well so it, I couldn't pick it up in the car and um, yeah I ended up not knitting for the entire ride home which was like three hours so that was a bit unfortunate but then again, it was nice to have a chat with my boyfriend as well, so uh, not not too worried about it. And I got them finished anyway, so yeah, I'm I'm really happy with the socks. So that's not the only project I've been working on. My Dusala uh, cardigan. So that's a pattern by um, Asa Tricosa or Asa Suderman. I think one is her name and one is her knitting nickname. Trico is uh, knitting, I think, in, in French. So uh, the cardigan has grown a little bit. On the left front side, you can see I finished the neck button band. I, I, I think that if you don't know this pattern, it probably doesn't make sense. But here I've turned for the neck button band. And on the other side of the cardigan, I'm still working on increasing this neck bottom band to the right size and then I need to pick up stitches along this edge here so here um, for the cardigan and then I can start knitting more straight down I don't know how far I still have to go for the shoulders can't really fit it uh, too because um, the needle that I'm using or the cable <laughs> the needle that I'm using is probably a little bit too short for that uh, so I might try and see if I can find a longer cable for it but so far I don't know so uh, yeah also um, it's starting to look more stripy I thought last week that it wasn't so bad but <laughs> you can definitely see that I'm alternating skeins but I don't care I like this effect so it's uh, a very mild striping so far although if if I look at these skeins there's probably going to be some somewhat more extreme striping uh, further uh, further ahead in the cardigan but i i really like it so i'm i'm really happy with uh with the cardigan even though i didn't make that much progress because i i wanted to finish my socks first and you guys working full time and uh, having to wake up early it, it takes a lot of time so not that much time to knit anymore but after I um, finished my socks, the, the ones that I've just shown you, uh, I cast on a new pair of socks because that's how it goes. So after pair number 9 for my boyfriend, I cast on uh, number 10 for my boyfriend. And uh, this one is a bit unique because I have never ever knit something um, or knit socks for him before with a structured pattern. So this one, uh, it's nothing special. Basically it's the same sock, but it has uh, ribbing on the top of the foot and it will have uh, ribbing all along the leg. Nothing crazy, but I thought let's just do something different for, for this sock. Let me get all the yarn. 
out of the way so that you can have a proper look at it. Uh, and this yarn is uh, Scheepjes in Victor color. So that's this yarn. I'm not sure, but I think uh, Scheepjes is a Dutch brand because uh, it, it really sounds like a Dutch word, uh, like uh, little ships, <laughs> uh, as in boats. <laughs> so uh, yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, you, you may not have seen this kind of yarn before, but it's just something that I bought from my local yarn shop. Nothing special, just a sock yarn uh, in these grey and blue colors. Of course they have many more colors, but my boyfriend likes his blues and uh, neutrals, so there you go. Um, blue and grey socks for him. <laughs> um, but uh, there, there is something that's even more special about this sock because I was planning on living quite a bit on these socks but that didn't happen because I, I, I knit on these socks mostly in the train commuting to and from work so it's a small project that you can bring along quite easily um, but yesterday I was sitting in a train and um, I was knitting away and I was sitting next to this is this little girl I think she was maybe eight years old something like that I don't know exactly didn't ask uh, but she she was looking at, at what I was doing and she said whoa that's so cool um, so how do you do that and uh, I started explaining how uh, how I, I knit and showed her a little bit and then she asked if she could try so uh, yeah I, I thought why not of course she can try um, big fun time, I think, uh, teaching someone how to knit. Might be a useful skill for the future if I ever have children myself. So, uh, yeah, we, we sat together and, um, well, I think she managed to do like three stitches on, the, on this sock. And uh, that took probably around half an hour, but um, like all, all, almost all of my commuting time yesterday. But it was... Uh, yeah, it was fun. Uh, she she managed to, to do a few stitches. Uh, a lot of dropping and shifting back and forth the needles to, to show her what she had to do. But eventually she managed to make a few stitches and uh, yeah, it was it felt really good to teach someone how to knit. And uh, yeah, I, I thought nothing can, can really go wrong. With this project, I mean, if I w was knitting on my cardigan, I don't think I would have liked someone else uh, working on that because it's hand spun yarn and uh, I'm a little bit more precious about it. But these are just some plain socks, and I know that if, if she somehow messes up and I need to knit this bit again, no big deal, I'll knit it again. I mean, I like knitting, so that's fine. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's the last bit of knitting that I've done this week. So then I also have a little bit of an acquisition because I purchased yarn from Stranded Dye Works because I've been dying to try her uh, BFL uh, nylon sock yarn for the longest time and I've had my eyes on, the, on her bluish colors for a long time. So I purchased this. So this is uh, by Stranded Dye Works. Um, and it is uh, her BFL nylon uh, fingering weight yarn in the color Frostbite. So yeah, I, I really think this is an amazing color with a lot of the natural color I think of the, of the yarn, but also these blue and purplish specks on it. Uh, I think it, 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 it's going to be a gorgeous pair of socks. So. I also really want to try more BFL nylon sock bases just because I think they are more sturdy than merino yarns and I like that. So I, I, I want to be able to fairly compare them. So yeah, that's uh, Stranded Dye Works. But that's not all that I've uh, purchased uh, from there because I recently heard that she would have some fiber in her shop and uh, she told about having an update with fiber uh, before the summer 
but I wasn't able to make the update at that point also I did not have as much money to spend because at that point I didn't have a job yet um, but she also uh, update and had a little bit of fiber in her update this time so I purchased um, this BFL fiber as well so uh, as I like BFL <laughs> and uh, yeah. yeah I think this is just the gorgeous blue colors I, I love it I think I'm gonna make a head out of this I only have this braid she didn't have more in her shop when I tried to purchase some so I I think this is gonna be a hat or something because I, I'm it's gorgeous and I want it to be shown and uh, yeah I also want to be sure that I can finish a project that I make with it so um, it's definitely not gonna be enough for a sweater so yeah, that's it and um, I also managed to get hold of this uh, Shetland yarn and it's in the color aqua uh, and this color is also so totally my jam so uh, I stayed in my color comfort zone and I bought some Shetland yarn and some uh, some BFL and uh, yeah I'm planning to spin a lot with this uh, of this one I, I managed to get three braids so around 300 grams that might just be enough to make me a sweater if I manage to spin it thin <laughs> then I might be able to make a fingering weight sweater out of that. Who knows? Uh, but it's gonna take a while because if I want to spin this to a fingering weight then um, yeah, it will probably be around October <laughs> next year when I can start knitting a sweater out of this. So yeah. Anyway, I'm really happy that I uh, finally got my my hands on some Stranded Dye Works uh, yarn and fiber. Um, I think that's all of the normal content for this episode um, but I would like to remind you guys that there's a knit along going on on my uh, Ravelry group uh, which is called Knitting Teaspoon Podcast uh, group uh, and uh, it's not really a knit along because it's a more than one craft along so it's a it's a along a make along for uh, for any project that uses more than one craft so if you combine knitting and crochet or uh, knitting and sewing or crochet and hand dyeing yarn or spinning and whatever craft it's it's all fine if you want to make handmade buttons and and then put them on, on a hand sewn or a hand knit or hand crochet cardigan mm. that's all fine it all counts so make sure to enter. Uh, knit along runs until the end of October, so you still have some time. I think I um, posted a picture of my uh, summer top uh, that I finished last week, uh, and it's in a thread now. Um, yeah, anything will uh, anything will count, I, <laughs> I think. So uh, as long as it uh, has at least two crafts in it. So please make sure you enter your projects that use more than one craft and uh, maybe you will be able to get some prize. Uh, that's it for this week. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. I think I often forget to express my gratitude for watching this podcast because it really means a lot that I'm not just talking to my camera, but there's actually people watching uh, what I'm talking about and listening to my story. And uh, if you have any questions or suggestions for what I should talk, talk about, please let me know. Uh, so thank you so much for joining. It really means a lot. And I hope to see you next week. And 